uh, in this video we discuss uh, causality uh, and complex scalar field uh, we discuss the interpretation of the propagators uh, and discuss what Feynman propagator should be in this uh, video so let's start so uh, we have uh, seen that the operator uh, of the field the field operator uh, is written in this form and this is different from the classical uh, scalar field in the sense that uh, we have a we have uh, two sets of uh, creation and annihilation operator that is CP and DP. So uh, this was the operator phi and then phi dagger operator or or phi star because the Lagrangian was written in the form of uh, del mu phi star del mu phi minus uh, m square phi star phi. So this phi star operator uh, I think is just the dagger of this field operator here. And this was the conjugate momentum for the phi operator and this is for the phi star operator or phi dagger operator. We can also call it phi dagger. Now, uh, in the real scalar field, uh, we said that uh, this particular form, this was the particular form of the propagator here. Uh, where the propagator, what, what the propagator did was, uh, what the propagator did was, uh, it made a transformation. Uh, so propagator it propagated it created a state in the y and then there is a propagation from y to x so what is the amplitude corresponding to that propagation is captured by this propagator and we saw that the Feynman propagator was of this form mm, so the, this was the Feynman propagator and uh, so now the point is will this entire thing hold in the case of uh, the complex klein gordon field so uh, one of the one simple calculation shows that it doesn't hold because you see let's try to uh, calculate this propagator in this case of uh, complex scalar field so this is the form of the propagator where this operator form we can get from here but you see cp and dp will commute always whether be it be creation operator or annihilation operator so the obvious non-zero term in this kind of a uh, where we are squeezing from two sides with this uh, zero uh, state vacuum state so the only non-zero term can be obtained in this fashion because anyway uh, f uh, because uh, the vacuum gets annihilated by the cp and dp because of this relation here this is this can be the only possible uh, uh, the possible non-zero term. This was also the possible non-zero term in case of the real scalar field where you, if you see 0 CP CP dagger 0, this will be a non-zero term. But in this case, because I have CP and DP, I see that this term will also go to 0 because they commute. So I can move the DP and CP, so this will give me 0. So we see that the if we define the propagator in this form, we are getting zero always in the case of uh, this complex scalar field. So what we need to do is we need to define a propagator that uses this second degree of freedom, which is this phi dagger field. So for this, let's try to compute the uh, the commutator of this phi x and phi dagger y. So in the scalar field, we computed the commutator of phi x and phi y. But here we are using phi dagger. So this is, uh, this can be written in this form. Uh, so uh, the, the form is of this kind. I have written it here. This can be written of this form. Uh, and now we can use the uh, delta functions here and here. And then we can see that this is precisely the form. This is precisely the form that we obtained even in the real scalar field. So you see, this commutator gives dx minus y minus dy minus x. But the interpretation of dx minus y, so dx minus y is an integral. So dx minus y is this integral part with this e power minus ip dot x. And that is obtained sp precisely if I define the propagator dx minus y in this form using a dagger operator. So you see, if I didn't have this dagger operator, this would have been 0 and not equal to dx minus y. The presence of this dagger operator makes this non-zero and gives the relation dx minus y. So now once we see that the commutator of phi x phi dagger y is same as the commutator of uh, of the uh, of a real scalar field, we can uh, continue with the Lorentz invariant arguments 
that we discussed in the real scalar field that this commutator of phi x with phi dagger y it vanishes for all the space like separations but now this is uh, important that it vanishes for the space like separation because this minus this is zero but what it means is that you see phi phi of x phi of x uh, phi of x acting at a point zero it creates it cre uh, this can be interpreted as creating a particle at a space time point uh, creating a particle at uh, space time location x but phi dagger phi dagger x acting on zero is like creating an anti particle at location x because of uh, specifically because of the charge operator that we have discussed uh, where uh, the charge operator gives a different meaning to the single particle states so uh, so the interpretation of this cancelling out can be said as at a space time position 0 i create an anti particle and then this is also an anti particle so this entire term is showing that there is an anti particle pro propagation from y to x and that is cancelling a particle propagation from x to y so we see for space like separations the particle propagation from x to y cancels the anti particle propagation from y to x this in turn ensures that this operator is zero for space like separations and the fact that our theory is lorentz invariant and the feynman uh, propagator now can easily be defined in this fashion which is simply again dx minus y uh, for x0 greater than y0 and dy minus x for y0 greater than x0 but this dx minus y is 0 phi x phi dagger y 0 and this y minus x is 0 uh phi y phi dagger x 0 so that's all for this video in this video we uh, discussed the causality argument related to the uh, related to the complex uh, klein gordon field we see that we see that this cannot define a propagator but because this is always zero in whatever frame you look at but this defined a propagator Uh, such that it followed the proper lorentz invariant properties of this commutator so uh, that's it.